I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer. And you know my motto, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And the truth of those words should be really apparent when we're looking at all of the chaos that is happening on Wall Street right now. Because if you don't hold it and it's just an intangible in somebody else's control and they don't want you to either buy it or liquidate it, boom, they just cut you off. So I'm sorry I digress, but we're going to start with some consultant questions from their clients. And I'm going to start with Keely. And Keely's client, Fillmore, asks, do wash sales apply only to stocks or can I turn over my precious metal stack in wash sales at 0% tax in the years before I have to sell and buy real estate then be able to tell Uncle Sam or Joe, nope, sorry, I paid most of the tax already and here are my returns. Have a nice day. Well, wash sales only apply to stocks. And a wash sale is a sale of the security so that everybody's on the same page. It's a sale of a security at a loss and a purchase of the same or substantially the same identical security shortly after that. The losses then are actually not tax deductible. So wash sales do only apply to stocks. Having said that, there's something else that you need to be aware of. And uh, this is based upon communication from this very intelligent ex-IRS agent that uh, runs for ITM, the annual compliance forms that we have to do and tests. And I had this conversation with him on selling gold for gold. So let's say gold bullion for gold collectibles. He told me that that, and I am not a tax accountant or agent or anything like that. So please make sure that you verify this. But it is my understanding that if you're doing gold for gold, that is like for like and would not be considered a taxable event. Okay. But it's not a wash sale. You cannot do wash sales with precious metals. So that's that. From Sari, AC asks, there has been a lot of talk about QCIP as a means to track the gold we are buying. Yes, there has. That actually came about or began to come about in 2016. What does this mean for confiscation? What does it mean when someone says monetary non-QCIP gold, will it be safer to hold and own Will the monetary non of gold be safe from confiscation? So there's a few questions in here. Number one, uh, it's actually Delaware Deposit Trust Company that came out and started adding QCIP numbers to the gold bars and coins, ostensibly to make it easier to store and track clients' gold and silver. However, if you take this this next step further to what this means for confiscation, it would certainly make it easier to track the ownership of physical gold and silver if there was indeed a QCIP number on there. It'd be easy enough, frankly, to put it on there for the new bullion gold. So does what does this mean for confiscation? Well, look. I cannot tell you absolutely that there will be an overt confiscation. But what I can tell you is that through inflation, the government has been confiscating your wealth since the day you were born. And through the tools of financial repression and interest rates, the central banks have been, been doing the same darn thing. So to think that they are going to stop when they've gotten most of your wealth, and this is the last little bit of wealth you might have, personally, I don't think they will. I think we will indeed see an overt confiscation. And if it has a QCIP in it, it makes it easier to track. Uh, what does it mean when somebody says monetary non-QCIP gold? 
this could be the gold. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. But that could be the gold that is already out there in particularly large bar forms. Uh, and would it be safer to hold and own? Probably not. You know, I go by the general rule. If I can hold it inside of an IRA, then that's not the kind of gold that I want to buy. So I go to the pre-33s. And the reason why, there are many reasons why I do that. But, you know, remember, my Uncle Al really gave me that fantastic lesson in 1964. Not, not that I understood it at the time. And frankly, it took me a while before it really kind of sunk in. But at that time, 1964, it was illegal to hold more than five ounces of gold in any way other than the way that my Uncle Al held it. And he had thousands of ounces of it because I saw it with my own two eyes. So that's what I trust because I've had personal experience with it. I wouldn't want Q-sipped gold and I would not definitely not want new. I, I don't buy bullion. You've got to do whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just telling you what I do for myself because I want to be in the kind of gold that the guys that get to write the rules or that have the ability to influence those that write the rules, what do they have for themselves? Well, we've seen that because they can get a an, you know, tenth of an ounce of gold for $8 million. And certainly anybody that can afford that is either going to be writing the laws or likely have the ability to influence those. And that's such a small amount of the global gold market, less than 2%, that's where I want to hold my gold wealth, especially when I can buy that so far below the true fundamental value of an ounce of gold. And we've talked about many times. And this also from Siri and from AC, I am looking into holding my gold in a private vault. I was wondering how safe it would be from government scrutiny. Could or would they enter into private vaults to check the contents of the private safe deposit boxes? Well, I have to say, and as we've been witnessing anyway, governments can really do anything they want. So that is far beyond my control. Having said that, though, I personally hold my gold in a private safe deposit box because it is less likely to be scrutinized in that way. Because private vaults hold a number of different things, not just gold or silver. Now, having said that, you know, I can walk to the private vault. And, and really, I hold it in a private vault because of the work that I do and how visible I am. So I'm not going to hold any of it here for obvious reasons. But there is, we do have a one sheet on some ideas and you could diversify how you hold it. So maybe you're barterable, some, some of the barterable along with cash, which you might need in a moment's notice. And then the collectibles that you're going to use as you execute the strategy so you don't need it immediately in crisis could be held somewhere else. But I personally do not hold it in a bank safe deposit box, nor is that something I recommend. So, yes, I definitely do prefer a private vault. And uh, then from WC, I am a novice and I've heard of the Great Reset. But can you please explain what they are talking about and what it means and how might that happen? Well, a reset is a shifting from one system into the other system. And it's typically quite, quite painful because the old system has to be torn apart and they have to justify the shift in the new system. So when I say, you know, that you've heard about the Great Reset, we are already walking through the reset Really, it was 2008 when the financial system that we were accustomed to from 71 died. 
And everything then has been moving and getting us into position to shift into a brand new system. They have to do it because the current system is based on debt and the debt, it's not just that it's not sustainable, which is what they like to say, but it is not payable. And even at these low interest rates, the debt, the interest on that debt in, in the U.S. is constantly compounding. And all of the experiments from the central banks have been failures. They may have covered up some stuff so you could go, oh, Lynette, what are you talking about? It's a failure. They don't fix anything. They don't change behavior. They just change the rules. And when they change the rules, it is never in your benefit. As a great example would be money market funds that investors were taught is like a savings account and it's really, really safe. But September 2019 is when the money market, and, and in two, after 2008, when one of the money markets broke the buck, in other words, the share traded below a dollar a share, Okay, what did they do? They changed the rules, making it harder and more expensive to liquidate in, in the case of a run. So they put in fees and gates. And when they were creating this system, they said that the fees have to be large enough to influence whether somebody's going to make that withdrawal. Same thing that they've done with the IRAs. I mean, you could look at an IRA and go, oh, I've got $100,000 in there. But if you take that as a distribution, then you have to pay your taxes on it. And people always go, oh, I don't want to pay my taxes, except you're at some point you're going to pay them. And this is probably the cheapest time. And the same thing was done with the money markets. And so going back to September of 2019, it was the money markets froze. And at that point, you know, I knew and I'm, I, I said it that this was the end, my friend, this was the end. And the central bank stepped in, supported those markets, changed the rules to even give hedge funds direct access to the government. And then what happened in, in you know, January, Mar February, March, COVID. All of this justifies the transition. And going back to that other question on the QCIP numbers, Okay, what they want is they want all assets, all wealth, everything, everything, the clothing on your back, everything digitized, turned into a digital instrument that can be very easily spent or traded, etc. So it is without any doubt whatsoever, you know, what are they talking about? Well, that's the reset and where they're shifting from one system into another. And the World Economic Forum's title of the Great Reset, where they're going to reset society, hasn't it been? Uh, and we're not done yet, but doesn't it look different to you? The economy, well, we're going into a more surveillance digital economy and the financial system, where all assets are digitized making them easier to trade, sell, spend on a global basis. Meaning that you are likely to volunteer your wealth without even realizing it because we are taught to spend, spend, spend. So how might it happen? It's already happening. There will be another big crisis. What's happening in the markets right now, if enough people lose, lose confidence, because Wall Street's fighting back. So we've got the battle going on right now. We'll watch it unfold. We'll talk about it more. We'll pay attention to it. But, you know, it's already happening. Life as we know it is different than it was even a year ago. So make sure that if you're subscribed, because a lot of subscribers have been telling us that suddenly once YouTube did this change, uh, they are not getting notifications. Some of you are, some of you aren't. So make sure that you turn on that bell notification so you get alerted when we go live. And this week, we 
are doing, we did the virtual gold conference and it airs on Wednesday, February 3rd. So I know that's different than what I've been telling you, but this is updated information. Wednesday, February 3rd at 8, 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So to get tickets in advance, just click that link below and you'll be able to buy your tickets. Also just out is the interview that I did with Dustin Nemos on Nemos News Network. So you definitely want to look at that. We talked an awful lot about silver. And by the way, since I have this out for him, and you guys have heard me reference these a lot, these are my sterling silver chopsticks that I bought at a yard sale, oh God, a million years ago, right? Remember, remember, please, silver and gold in any form is monetary at its base. It can be dented and dinged and broken and tarnished. It does not matter. It is still money at its base form. Now, next week, I'm going to be on with my very, I haven't seen him in so long, but my good friend, David Modell, on his BABY Investment Counseling and research channel. And I'm really excited because it's really been too long. And I'm sure he's going to have great, great questions to ask. So if you like this, please, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do hit that bell. Give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you share, 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 share all of this information because the reality is that it is absolutely time to cover your assets. And here at ITM, we use the strategy that I started to develop in 1987 based on repeatable patterns. We've all come together with all of our many, many years of experience and we make it better. We're constantly looking at how to make it better and you got to have a plan. You've got to have a plan. They have a plan. The central bankers and the governments, they have a plan. Wall Street, they have a plan. You need a plan too. So if we can be of service, we're happy to be. But keep in mind that really strong shields are made out of metal, not paper or promises. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.